Hi team. In this video, I'm going to explain how to build out the sources and uses table, and then demonstrate how to quickly incorporate the information contained in this table so that the transaction is actually reflected in an LBO model. I get a lot of requests for a little help with the awesome LBO case study we posted at asimplemodel.com. So I thought I would start to address these questions with some more awesome videos. Now, I've been building LBO models for a very long time, and I've developed an approach that I think is pretty clever. To explain why, I want to talk about the two most common approaches I see, which is how I was originally taught to make balance sheet adjustments for an LBO model, but that I now find are impractical and a little annoying for a few reasons. The first approach I was taught was to have the three statements on one tab, or even on three separate tabs, and then have the balance sheet adjustments on their own tab, what I really disliked about this approach was that I had the same financial statements on two tabs. So every time I made a change to the balance sheet, I had to make it in two places. And duplicative entry is just the worst. The second approach I was taught was to just split the financial statements down the middle and put the balance sheet adjustments in between the historical data and my frequently inaccurate projection. But this also isn't cool because referencing the data on this worksheet didn't allow me to simply paste across when I was creating output pages. I always had a huge gap in the middle. So over time, I found the most effective method was to put these adjustments in front of the balance sheet or behind it. But when you start working with monthly data, in front is much easier because two years of historical data plus five years of projections in monthly format require 84 columns. And you don't want to be scrolling that many columns over every time you want to make an adjustment. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. Now, in this iteration, we will be working with the information on the tab titled Summary Financials. And if you ever worry about making a mistake, you can just press Alt-H-O-M and then Alt-C to create a copy. And we'll move this to the end and press OK. This way, if any error causes you to delete your historical data, you have a backup available. Now, first things first, let's adjust our worksheet to make some room for our sources and uses. First, we're going to add 20 rows or so between the income statement and the balance sheet, which you can do with Alt-I-R, and then press F4 19 times. Not quite sure if that was 19, but hopefully it's close enough. Next, select the array, press Alt-H-O-H, -H, and I have a unique screen, so I'm going to make the row height 14.3. Press Enter. And next, I want to add 12 or 13 columns, give or take, somewhere in there, between the balance sheet line items and the balance sheet detail. So press Alt-I-C. And then just press F4 a whole bunch to repeat the action. Now these rows are way too wide. So press Alt-H-O-W. And I'll input a value of 12.5. And next, we can work on a little formatting. All right, so let's take a look at this new structural addition. In the first column titled Actual, on the left-hand side, we're going to input the data we have for the balance sheet on the date of the transaction, which is 12-31-2020. And then next we will make some pre-transaction adjustments, which will be reflected by the balance sheet listed here. 
And finally, we will record the transaction under our listed sources and uses to arrive at the post-transaction balance sheet. So let's input some values for our actual pre and post-transaction balance sheets. To do this first, we'll select the actual balance sheet for the date of the transaction, hit control C, navigate back over to column D, and press alt E S T to paste format and alt E S V to paste values. Delete the totals because we're going to input these as formulas. Select the array, press F5, Alt S for special, Alt O for constants, and OK. And then we will format these as inputs with Alt HH, and select a pale yellow background, and Alt HFC for color, and select blue. And next we can input our totals. Next, to carry over the relevant pre-transaction changes, we need to make the pre-close balance sheet equal to our actual balance sheet plus any debits less any credits. So I'm going to paste it over and then delete all the inputs. And then make the pre-transaction balance sheet equal to the actual balance sheet plus any debits less any credits. But make sure to switch the order when you get to the liability side of the balance sheet. As we know from the accounting equation, Debits and credits impact assets and liabilities in opposite fashion between assets and liabilities. So on the liability side, press equal, link to the actual balance sheet, subtract any debits, and add any credits. Now these are all formulas, so we can remove the formatting with Alt HH in and Alt HFC enter. Next press Control C, and we will repeat this process one more time for our final balance sheet column. So now on the left hand side, we have space for our pre-transaction adjustments. And on the right hand side, we will record the transaction. But to do that, we need our sources and uses. In part two of this video series, I will walk through the process of building the sources and uses tab. And in part three, I will explain how to link the sources and uses tab to this new structure. But otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.